Okay, welcome back to, uh, I don't know what this is. Anyway, um, this section of our yard has never been used. This house has been here nearly 70 years. And as far as I understand it, no one has ever done anything with this yard until now. Um, as a matter of fact, I put this door here. There was never a door here. Crazy. Well, little backstory. The house is owned um, by a little old couple. They bought it new in 1954, right around their retirement age. And apparently they didn't like the outdoors. They owned the house until they both passed away by 1993. And then it, they left it to a family member who proceeded to do nothing with this house. So we're going to put in a patio. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it the lazy man way. I'm going to try to level this off as best I can. Um, we're not doing pavers. That's not in the budget. We're going to be using crushed stone. The problem is this whole thing slopes. So I need to dig down this section here. Dig it down a little bit. Um, also come up with a way to put in a level. Um, well... Here we go. These are landscape timbers. These are pressure treated. They have a lifespan of about five to ten years, um, at which point they will need to be replaced. And I'm going to build a, uh, a holding perimeter um, that will uh, kind of, it's going to come out probably about this far, maybe, and then it's going to go in at an angle. That's where the grill's going to go. That picnic table is going to hopefully fit in this area once we get it all mapped out. And uh, I just bought this picnic table for 300 bucks delivered. It was uh, hand built, obviously as picnic tables often are, by a local craftsman. And this is a solid table. Well, it's as solid as a picnic table's gonna get. Weighs about 4,000 pounds, uh, but that's neither here nor there. Anyway, so fun times. Why the rototiller? Well, the soil's been packed down for a long time, and I'm going to use the rototiller to break it up and make it easier to shovel. So I'm going to kind of till my path like that, and then we're going to, we're going to do our thing. Um, might actually come out all the way and do a right angle. Probably going to have to buy more of those timbers, though, but uh, we'll think of something. Why crushed stone? Why not pavers? Why not wood? Why not build a deck? <laughs> That's one reason why. Crushed stone costs $34 a square yard. Um, it's going to take about four square yards to fill this in to the depth that I want. Also, my city requires permits for damn near everything. If I replace a light switch, I need a permit. If I build a deck, I need a permit. If I you need permits for damn near everything. But there's one interesting loophole. If I put in a paver patio, guess what? I need a permit. As long as I use something that water can drain through, I do not need a permit. <laughs> so it's cheaper, and I don't need to get the feds involved. I mean, that's a win, right? So, that all having been said, let's uh, start tilling. I'm going to pick up those these feel, uh, flagstones. These flagstones have actually been here since the house was built, as far as I know. They're of that time period. So, we're going to put those aside. Don't know what we're going to do with them. Poor little wormies. <clears throat> Lots of little wormies. Put them right there. Yeah, that and my grill is about ready to bust through that pallet, so I gotta do something. Ugh. But I don't want a wooden deck. And the reason why is because a wooden deck will rot out in no time. Because this area doesn't get a lot of sun, uh, anything made of wood will just rot. It's just a fact of life. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm 
trying to actually grow grass here, so bear with me on this. Yeah, grass doesn't want to grow here. So let's get the tiller fired up. This tiller is older than me by about two years. Yes, this tiller is about 41 years old. But guess what? It doesn't run. Oh, put it in stop. Well, that'll do it. So this will just break up the surface so I can just shovel it into a wheelbarrow and haul it away. How does that dig itself into China? So we're gonna try to get a straight line going this way. That's the idea. Anyway. And then once we get it all kind of prepped, we'll um I'm gonna tamp this down. And then we'll um Put some landscape fabric over it, level it off, tamp it down, and there we go. Uh, so that's pretty much what we just accomplished. So we cut down this section a couple inches and then raked it over that way. It's not perfectly level, but if I can get the... I don't need this to be perfect. I just need it to support gravel um, somewhat level. As long as these are level, and I'm going to do a 45 this way, almost an exact 45 as a matter of fact. So what I'm going to do is, um, yeah, that'll be pretty much exact. And these are going to get staked into the ground. We can backfill these to support them a little bit. But this is patio on a budget. This is an HGTV shit. So... Um, I only have about two weeks to get this done. And, uh, yeah. So all the dirt I carted away, I carted away about three we three wheelbarrows full. Four, actually. Four of those from this section. And they're actually on that side of the yard um, where the grass is really thin. And I'm going to spread it out. I put some over here in case Amelia wanted it for the garden. And, um... That looks pretty level to me. Um, but these are gonna be too high. That means two, two units high. Um, or maybe not, I may not even need to do that. I may just need the two. Well, I got or one, and a, one and a quarter, one and a half. And then we'll just backfill this with gravel. I mean, this, this is gonna work out just fine. I don't need the gravel to be eight inches deep. I just need it to be reasonable. And uh, we'll put some stepping stones, you know, some some two foot by two foot concrete pavers on top. It's going to look good. And again, we're doing this on a budget. I'm not doing any extra work. This is probably going to be temporary, about as temporary as that door was. <laughs> it's a running joke. The, the most permanent solution is the temporary one. All right, so... I think we got it pretty much roughed in. I'm going to um, stake the uh, lumber down, maybe maybe not tonight, but I'll do it tomorrow. We'll get it leveled off. I got to cut a piece, 45 at roughly, almost exactly 45. Zing, 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 and that's it. Um, but what we'll do is, once I have the wood pieces cut and ready to stake in place, I've got 10-inch spikes That'll hold all this in place. Um, I'm going to... Um, we'll put the landscaping fabric down first. They got the heavy-duty lifetime warranty stuff. And then maybe we'll rake out some high spots. What I'll do is I'll take one of those other ones right there. That, I got three more um, landscape timbers. And I'll just drag them along to get the high spots out of the way. And, uh, and then maybe tamp the ground a little bit more. Um, yeah, and that'll be it. And then what I'll do is I'm going to have the, uh, the landscape supply company dump 
I'm going to do, I think, four cubic yards of rock, and we'll put it right there on the driveway. So that's what we'll do. The Miata will have to live in the garage for now and not get used. Sorry, guys. There she is. Um, so that's going to have to sit there for a little bit until I get this all cleaned up. And we'll have to park in the street. But I'd rather them drop the stone on the driveway because I'm really trying to grow grass. And it'll be easier to clean stone off a driveway than grass. Also, I don't need to put a tarp down. <laughs> so I'm going to just probably call them up tomorrow. And maybe next week they'll drop some off. Tomorrow's Friday, so I won't be able to do it this weekend. But maybe if I have them drop the stuff off, uh, you know. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. And then, um, there you go. So, um, I wanted to show you guys something, too. So, guys, this, this is quite interesting. When they built this house, I don't know... Let's take a look at this. All right. So here's the uh, garage slab. What I don't know is how far down this slab goes. But what I can tell you is that there are two cracks in the slab. There's one here and there's one there. Last summer, when I discovered these cracks in the slab... I'm like, I've got to do something about this. So, and they're like, they're, they're wide, wide, wide cracks. Well, no, not that wide. It's like probably about an eighth of an inch or so, maybe a little bit more. What I wanted to do is see if it's a recurring issue. Um, so what I did was I filled the cracks in with epoxy. This is before the winter. This was uh, back in uh, probably August of last year. So I dug down a couple inches into the soil and I filled those cracks in with epoxy. And I figured, let's just see if there's any active movement. So we'll let it go through a freeze and thaw cycle. And here we are in the spring. The ground is, is thawed. We've had a few rainstorms. And um, so far, so good. That one hasn't moved, and neither has this one. So, what I was thinking, if we found that the cracks had reappeared, like, within, you know, a season, um, then we would probably have some issues. We would probably have a problem on our hands. A potentially serious one. That being the garage slab is actively shifting around. Um, due to erosion, due to God only knows. Um, that doesn't seem to be the case. And that crack extends, by the way, across the slab to the other side. It's also in the floor, obviously. Um, what I believe happened here, when they poured, they poured this slab over top of another slab. I believe it was done this way at the time of construction. I don't know why. Um, there's really a lot of things I don't quite understand here. Um, there's, you can see clearly there's a well-formed slab down here at the bottom. And it has a crack in it right there. A little gap in there. Then there was a second, actually one, maybe two slabs poured on top of that. Look at how thick that concrete is. And that, and that, we don't know how, how deep that goes, but it, it probably goes down quite a bit. Um, that's like two feet of concrete that that porch is sitting on. <laughs> it's crazy. The garage could potentially be sitting on just as much concrete, if not more. I don't really know. Uh, but what I do know is, I mean, look at this. This is a ledge here. And this kind of matches up with what I've found on that side on the, on the garage slab. And I dig down a little bit with a hand shovel. So, I mean, it's a massively thick slab. That slab is, gosh, that is thick. Um, let me grab a hand shovel. 
but that crack goes all the way out to here and I'd have to ex yeah I excavated it over on this side I dug down about a foot and I filled that in completely with injectable silicone so let's grab a hand shovel here and let's see so what I was thinking is it was it's possible that this garage was built <clears throat> on a um it was basically they just dug down maybe a foot maybe two feet and they didn't pour any um uh, they didn't pour um look at this See, look at that they didn't pour any footings or maybe they pour the footings at the surface. I don't really know. See, yeah, so that's great. That's look at how far that goes out. So I don't know what they did here, but what I can tell you is, it looks to me like it was a very bad pour. I'm thinking. Yeah, see, look at how far we dug this down. All of this. So this is basically how high it used to be. You can see that. We dug it down to here. This I left alone. I'm going to leave this alone. This hasn't moved or shifted. Um, what I may do is uh, take these blocks off and cement them in position. And uh, that way they don't shift. But this is staying. I didn't dig. I didn't take this out. This is leveled. And it has been since I put it there five years ago. Uh, how do you want to budget? <laughs> that window was taken out. Um, I took that out last year or two years ago. There's actually a story behind this. Um, the pandemic is why this window was bricked over. Uh, that is why it was the pandemic. I'll explain why. <clears throat> so, was it 2019? The summer of 2019. Uh, my plan was to replace all the basement windows, including this one, which was an odd size. It's like a 36-inch window. So the plan was to replace that window as, as, as well as the others. Now, all the other windows are a standard size. And I bought three of those, replaced those pretty quickly. And I ordered, in May of 2019, I ordered a window to fit here, which is a weird, it's like, I think it's, I want to say it's like 18 by 36, or 12 by 36, it's a weird window size. They don't stock it. Well, there was a pandemic, I don't know if you guys remember this, but there was a huge, whole big thing, and um, you couldn't buy windows anywhere. If there were, you couldn't get custom windows made, you just can't. Um, you know, you order the window... It could take months to get it in. I ordered the window in May. Now, meanwhile, I'm replacing all those other windows. They're done. Except for this one. So they told me in May that it would be until, it wouldn't be until August that I would get my window. So I said, no big deal. So August comes. I call them again. Oh, it'll be December. <laughs> December uh of 20 2019 possibly uh, january of 2020 i might not see the window so i said you know what bucket i i went over to lowe's i grabbed a whole bunch of bricks and some mortar there we go and and then i got me thinking like maybe i don't need a window there you know maybe i don't need a window there because why <laughs> so the other side of that brick is um, a lot of waterproofing. Um, so I painted the back side of that brick once it was all cured. Um, I painted it with a um, with a substance used for uh, waterproofing masonry. Uh, so it's painted all over the brick. Then I put a a very thick um, uh, bit bitumen bitumen or bitumen bitumen whatever grease ice and water shield over that then i put one inch or no two inches of foam uh foam uh board cut to size 
and then sealed in place with um, with uh, with spray foam adhesive, uh, spray foam uh, insulation. No water is getting through there. <laughs> if it does, well, bust my buttons. But this is a little annoying. <clears throat> yeah, this is a little little bit annoying here. Now they like what the fuck? <laughs> what were they doing here? I, I don't know. I don't know. This is perfect. This house is not built by the homeowner, I might add. This is a professionally built house. And some of the things that I have found in this house are just bizarre. That's one of them. It's just the icing on the cake, really. But it's just crazy. Some of the shit I've found. What I'm going to do, I think I'm going to get another brick and put it here. Oh, here's the other thing. The sill is right there. That's the sill. So they build the walls directly on top of the slab. They didn't put any, uh, there's no stem walls on the garage. So no stem walls, nothing like that. Stem walls, what do you need those for? That's crazy. Some of the stuff that they used to get away with. But then again, if you look at how a house today is built. This house is proven itself oops <laughs> i'm not a very good throw this house has proven itself uh over the past 68 years 69 years 69 years this house is 69 years old it's proven itself and um today's houses i don't think they're gonna last this long patio on a budget day three day two day three whatever um so i got the wood cut to size i have it 45 right here so it kind of nestles into the corner of the foundation it's not perfectly level but that's okay it doesn't need to be um but i'm gonna have to build up the ground once i get this all settled i'm gonna have to build all this up with new soil because we are raising the ground over here just a little bit and um i've got 10 inch spikes and i've got some landscaping fabric once I get the fabric down, I'm going to hold it down with some of those flagstones. And then we'll have the rock delivered, uh, hopefully soon. I'm hoping this week, actually, I want to get on that. So, But that's pretty much the concept. And again, the grill's going to go here. All right, nice convenient access to the grill. There's not really a lot of room here for a table, which is fine. But we'll put like, you know, maybe a... Like, a, like that thing right there, that little serving cart, maybe we'll put that over there or over here. Little prep area for the grill. Walkway here. And then down the road, I was thinking build another one for the table. You know, we'll level off a section of the ground for the table and we'll have that in the nice, in a nice little rock area. I like this idea because this is really, really cheap. I can't even tell you how cheap this is to do um, and easy, you know, just leveling off some of the ground. And the right way to do this, because I don't do anything right. I'm a homeowner, so I'm ex that's expected of me. But the right thing would be to dig this down a few inches, all of it, excavate the whole thing, and then fill it up. Well, maybe put about one or two inches of, um, of um, what they call... Don't tell me. Uh, like a like a clay or a um, uh, paver base or something like that. Something that can be compacted. And then you put your either put pavers in or your gravel or whatever you decide to do. Gravel is cheap. Really cheap. And let me show you some gravel work I did about four years ago. So this was done. I did this in a day um, right here. This was done, this is leftover material from the front of the house. But this, you, to keep this clean, you just grab the leaf blower once or twice a season. Actually, every time I mow the lawn, I blow this out. Every time I mow the lawn, I blow this out. And you're going to get some detritus settling into it. See, this wasn't done right. This wasn't prepped right. So the ground is actually, yeah, there's a stone under there. And that's the, um, 
that's the weed barrier right there. But the front of the house, I actually put a little bit more effort into. We just had uh, landscapers come in and uh, clean up the entire yard because that was all filled with broken branches and stuff from those trees because those things shed every winter. In fact, I think that one might be dead. <laughs> Yikes. But they went over the whole lawn, raked it, power raked it. I do that every year. It's 400 bucks a year and they just do it for me. And it's so easy. I'd rather write a check than break my back. So this is some this is the same stone we're gonna use. And you can see it's holding up real nicely. It's nice to walk on too. It has a nice crunchy sound. But this we um we use these we got these little granite blocks for free and we did the edging with the granite blocks. But the ground is starting to go underneath them and I think what I'm gonna have to do is reborder all of this, but nothing's growing through it, nothing. Nothing ever grows through. I'm using landscape fabric underneath here. Nothing grows through and um, it's, it's holding its own. That was done four years ago. <coughs> so I figure, and that again, just regular maintenance, kind of pick up the, the branches and stuff that falls into it. This block has moved. So these granite blocks, probably not a good idea. So I'm probably gonna redo the bordering, but other than that, shouldn't have to do much to keep it up. So I just pulled this up and pulled it back a few inches. We're gonna lay our landscape fabric all over and put it back. And then we're gonna nail it down, we'll trim the fabric once it's all nailed in place. Pretty. I've given it some thought and here's what I'm going to do for this landing area. I'm going to need more spikes. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a box from those because I got enough of them. And we're going to build it too high, not too high, but two of those high. And it's going to go in like this, right angle, boom. It's going to come out. Well, it's going to come out the entire width of the door and it's going to kind of go around like that. We're gonna fill it with rock, and that's gonna be the landing for this. I'm such a genius, just kidding. But I'm gonna build it out of those timbers, fill it with stone, and that's gonna be the steps. That's gonna work out just fine. Um, I might have to fill it with hard pack. Yeah, maybe not, maybe not. But the nice thing about that is it'll be self-draining. Kinda like my my job. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so that'll be that. This is going to look good. It's going to look good, at least. I smashed off some of that ledge. I, I believe that it's hard to say really what happened here. Um, but for some reason, they raised up that floor by a lot, <laughs> a wicked lot. They poured it twice. I, I don't know why. You know what? I think I think I know what they did. I think I know what they did. Originally, I believe that yeah, okay. I think what happened was that at one point the garage floor and the breezeway floor were at the same level, right? Or the garage was maybe a step up. I think this was completely open. Like there were no windows or anything here. So it was like you'd walk. Yeah. So what they did was they put the windows or they raised this up. And it had to have been shortly after the house was built because, I mean, if you look at the age of the. Oh, wait, I got to put some more, more blocks down. If you look at the age of some of these materials. Um, they're definitely period correct for the mid-50s. But they had raised it up. That was not intended to be that way. But the garage and breezeway are original to the house. I mean, that much is, is that's indisputable. Um, but I do believe they had raised this floor after the fact. And this was just a pass-through, you know, from one from the backyard to the front. 
I believe that is what happened. So anyway, let me uh, grab some more stones. I gotta, I gotta weigh that down. <coughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna build this out. Get some more 10 inch spikes. We'll build it out, make it look nice and cheap. Yeah. So now you get the idea. Um, I'm gonna have to buy more landscape timber at least one more and we're going to make this is going to be three high rather than just two so that way that so the steps in, in i think by code <laughs> they have to be equal um as well i mean when you're doing outdoor landscaping i'm sure there's some margin of error but if i this whole box is going to get full of gravel so the gravel is going to come up to about here so you're going to have What's that? It's about a four inch rise. What's that? Three inches? These are supposed to be around four if it, four, yeah, yeah. Four inches thick. So if, let's just say the gravel's up to the first layer. Two and three quarter. Okay, so two and three quarter. Um, times two, let's just call it six inches of rise. So if that is the case for the first step, the second step will be, let's take a look here, about, just about the same height. So that is, uh, that's pretty much what we need six inches of rise in each step and that would be that would be good that would be perfect so that's what i'm shooting for so i got to get more 10 inch spikes because i'm not going to get away with eight inches we're going to have to level it as much as we can so i'm gonna have to pull back the landscape fabric a little bit and we'll build the turf up a little to get it up to what we need and then i'll call the gravel truck and say bring it on all right. Yeah, these are going to get spiked about every foot into the ground, just like the main. I think one every foot is probably a little bit overkill, but I don't want any movement. So this is a lot prettier than a couple of concrete blocks, which is what we had for years. Uh, we'll see how long it lasts. But that's the thing is these landscape timbers, they don't last forever. I mean, they are pressure treated, they're ground, uh, ground contact rated and all that, but they're not gonna last forever. That's okay. Neither do humans, right? <laughs> so anyway, I think that's enough for today. It's, the rain is coming and going, coming and going. It's like ridiculous. I hate this kind of weather because the sun comes up. Ooh, beautiful, let's go work. Bring out the hammer, here comes the rain. It's just the way it goes. Oh, little pro tip. I'm going to hide some of these old concrete blocks by smashing them up and using them as filler. I just got that idea just now. Like, wait a minute, how can I get rid of those blocks? Oh, wait, haha. -ha. Just hide them. But using them as filler will save on some of the gravel. And uh, having a gravel step that's that deep, that's just gravel, might not be a great idea. Um, I mean, gravel's pretty stable. That's what the nice thing about gravel is it locks into itself. So it's not going to be like, like you don't want to use polished pea stone because your foot will go through it. But gravel won't do that. It packs nicely. So um, I've got to get this kind of leveled off. Um, I think I'm going to run to the hardware store now and get the extra piece I need and get the materials I need at least to get this gravel ready. I think that would be a smart idea. It's gravel ready, it's like shovel ready, but, but not, not really the same thing. And we'll, um, we'll make it happen. Okay, so this is our new step. What do you think? So what I'm going to do is there's a couple of things I can, I need to get rid of a bunch of just junk. Um, I've got some concrete mix that I need to get rid of. We've got some debris from the plows when they destroyed the road. 
So I put some uh, some paver sand and leveled it. Um, although it shifted downward a bit on this side, so it's not perfectly level anymore. But it is this way, just not this way. It kind of slopes down, which is totally fine. I mean, it's not beautiful, but and again, neither am I. So what we're going to do is we're going to get all that junk and throw it in there and take the rest of my about two bags of paver sand. We'll kind of spread that in, you know, to fill in some of the gaps. And that's it. That's how we're going to do her. I'd say at this stage, we are ready for rock, officially. And this was kind of a last minute change. I wasn't planning on doing this, but here we are. Um, I'm glad I did this because this is much nicer than a couple of blocks. Um, so what we have going on here is just some road. Uh, so when they plow the, the roads here, they tend to tear up patches and deposit them neatly along the edge of the, uh, of the road where our snow blowers tend to chew it all up. And <clears throat> Anyway, so that's what a lot of this is. It's just stuff from the plow. Got that for free. And um, paver sand to kind of fill in some of the gaps. And then the rock is going to go. So we have about an inch or so of surface for the rock to, to, to go on top of. But the point of all this is I don't have to fill a cubic yard of, of rock <laughs> or whatever. Half a cubic yard of rock in that. You know, I don't have to waste it. So... Um, I'm going to now base my measurement on about four inches of depth over this court, this area here. So that's probably two and a half to three cubic yards of stone that we need to buy. Um, it was going to be seven inches deep, um, but I was able to get it down. These flagstones aren't staying here. These are just to weigh this down so it doesn't go anywhere. Um, that is nice. I mean excuse the poor cut uh, quality. I used a, I used a uh, saber saw to cut this um, because I didn't want to get my skill saw all wet. And, um, but this is solid, man. This is going to be a nice step. So you just walk up here and get the door open and step inside. A little bit nicer than it was. Again, this block is just here to take up space. Anything anything we can do to, to fill up some of that space so we don't have to waste beautiful crushed stone, uh, you know, doing all that. <coughs> so, there you have it. So I now need to deliver the rock, or have the rock scheduled for delivery. And I can, um, I can call this a done deal. Just in time for Mother's Day, we're having a little barbecue kind of thing, so... I want to get this done before Mother's Day, which is coming up in a little bit. I just planted something in the front yard. That's where that came from. <sighs> Whatever. Um, I got to plant grass seed here now, but not yet. I got to wait until the rock is filling in the area, and that's that. All of this, under 500 bucks for the timbers, the stakes, the screws the fabric and the rock. You can do all this for under 500, in 2023, for under 500 bucks. So you gotta, you, you gotta take the wins where you can get them, you know? I may do the same thing here. I might build another wooden frame, a little bit of stone. I'll just buy the stone in the bags and just fill that in and, um, you know, have a nice little step there too. Welcome back, folks. This is my new patio. I was going to do a, I think I actually have footage of me building this. So I might throw some of that footage in here towards the end. But this is the solution I came up with um, after five years of just kind of weighing options and determining what would work the best for the situation. So the thing is, I went with a gravel patio because it allows water to penetrate the surface, which means that I do not need a permit. Always thinking. Excuse me. <clears throat> so now that the project is completely done, and I did a separate video, by the way, on my Weber Genesis E325 grill, an amazing grill for the price. Um, 
There was one final touch that I had to put in, and it's this, an exterior outlet. I was gonna put it up here, but I put it down here instead. Um, this was a very easy job, and I'll describe the process that I used and what tools I used, even though I'm not doing a video demonstration of how I did it. I used my, um, my oscillating tool, and uh, <clears throat> they actually make bits for this purpose, or cutting bits. An oscillating tool is like a, a precision saw that uses vibrations to move the blade uh, at such a rapid pace that you can basically make a plunge cut straight into a wood substrate or whatever you're trying to cut. You can cut anything with an oscillating tool. They're not very expensive. I think I paid less than a hundred bucks for mine. Anyway, so I used a um, like a one and a half or two inch blade and I cut into each layer. There's three layers I had to cut through here. Uh, vinyl, wood clapboard siding, and sheathing. So I made each cut doot, 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 like that. And uh, after, of course, tracing out the box like this uh, onto the siding with a pencil, and I just kind of cut right in each layer at a time, one layer at a time, and peeled away what I could until I got a hole that goes right through the house that is that exact dimension. I used a, um, what they call an old work box, which is designed to go into a pre-existing wall or drywall or whatever you're trying to put it into. And it can be screwed in from the, from the outside or it can be clamped to the wall with two included ears and screws. Because the wall is over two inches thick, I had to use the um, screw uh, mount method on the outside. I then used, uh, this is a Hubble Tamac extra duty um, exterior in use box. These are, or cover, these are designed to be used um, in harsh weather conditions. So normally on, on the old fashioned exterior outlets, you would have a, um, like a little spring loaded door with a gasket. You could plug something in. The problem is those aren't weather tight when it's in use. Now, these boxes are designed to expand to allow for um, an extension cord plug. Um, some, some power supplies will fit in these, and you run the cord out this corner, which is notched out for a cord. And then when you close the lid, you can lock the lid shut, and this expands outward to accommodate for whatever you've got plugged in. And that maintains a nice weather-resistant not watertight, but a weather-resistant uh, outlet cover, even when it's in use. There's another style where you actually have a hard, rigid plastic or translucent plastic cover that hinges open at the top or the side, and uh, they're also an option too. But these are nice and compact when they're not in use, and uh, the eventual goal is to, and why I had to do this, is we need to put um, some string lights. So we're going to put some string lights from the house to the tree and back suspended by a, um, a steel cable and that'll give us a nice outdoor patio lighting, backyard lighting, whatever you want to call it. Let me show you how I wired this up just in case you're considering doing an exterior outlet on a house that never had one. Okay, so the other side of that outlet is over here. Um, and there's the back side of the box. So you cut the box opening for the mounting surface of the box. No bigger, no smaller. Uh, that way it can be safely mounted to the wall. So yes, it looks like this hole is bigger than it needs to be, but it is the exact size it needs to be. This is wired, uh, it's a 15 amp outlet, wired to our breezeway circuit, which is its own 15 amp circuit goes to this junction box right here. The line to the house or to the panel comes into this box where it serves that outlet, our garage lighting, because you want to keep your garage or shop lighting from off the, uh, you want to keep it off of the circuit that is feeding the garage or the shop. This way, if you blow a breaker while you're working on something at night, you still have light to get around and safely get out of the situation. Um, it also runs over here to this outlet, which I did the same thing. Right there. So there's another one in the front of the house. 
Again, this house never had any exterior outlets of any kind. Um, we have decided with doing this project, you might as well just get that all done at the same time. So we have a functioning patio with power. And uh, we also have a nice place to plug in our vacuum for the cars. Or if we decide to pressure wash something, we can plug it in outside rather than running the cord all the way to here or over there. I did completely rewire this garage about four years ago. And it was the best thing I ever did because when this house was built, this garage ran off of the kitchen circuit. There was one outlet and it was over here. And that was it. One outlet, 15 amps, sharing it with the kitchen. And that is how this house was built. Of course, things have changed since 1954. We now have a 20 amp circuit for the shop outlets, of which there are plenty. And we have a 15 amp circuit serving the exterior outlets as well as the breezeway. Hey buddy. And this is what it looks like from in here. We have a nice view. Now we actually, um, we have bears now apparently. Um, there was a bear walking through our yard uh, a couple days ago, a big brown black looking thing. Um, and uh, so that happened. So we've got to make sure we don't keep any food out here because, well, we don't want to attract the bears. So um, that's the job. Now, this whole project um, probably cost me, with the wiring and the plugs and everything, the rocks, the the uh, the timbers, I think I'm in this whole pro. And I also adjusted this door. This door was, it was, it was grabbing at the bottom. Now it's, it moves nicely. This whole thing, we're probably looking at about maybe five or six hundred bucks. That's with everything. Um, so I guess that's a, that's a, it's a pretty, uh, pretty inexpensive way to um, add a little bit of uh, appeal to your backyard, which in this case was, it was just a sand pit back here. We couldn't grow grass in this entire section. We could never grow grass. Now, one nice thing is we did have some trees cut um, he cleaned up the canopy a little bit so we're actually getting sun here which we never had before um, literally it's never been this bright in this uh, in this backyard area and what's also nice is by cutting that cutting back some of those trees we actually have grass growing now that the grass is getting sunlight it is actually growing for the first time ever um, and filling in a little bit nicer. All we got to do is water it on a regular basis and we should be okay. Thank you for watching. And uh, if you have any more uh, tips, and if you're looking for any more bad ideas, um, I'm your man. But literally though, the first step in doing anything here was breaking over that window in that, uh, not bad for my first brick job. What do you think? I did this back during the pandemic and um, I'm kind of liking it actually. It looks, looks pretty good. It looks pretty uh, bricky. Holding up nicely, no cracks, no shifting. I guess I did my job. No leaks either. That's all I can ask for, right?